Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Susan's Just Making It, I'm Susan, and as always, I'm here making stuff, messes, chaos, and just trying to make it through life. If you've been here before, welcome back, and if this is your first time watching, welcome to my channel. Hope everyone's doing great today. I am so excited to show you the latest project that I just finished. Um, I really worked to get it done so I could get it filmed and uploaded and out to you guys. Um, really surprised with how it turned out it's a little out of my comfort zone something a little bit different but i like that i like to challenge myself doing something that i don't usually do um i've been working on this pretty consistently like i said for the last like four or five days a good chunk of time each day and um really excited to have it done now a while back in a video i asked um, my viewers if they had any suggestions for any themes for junk journals for me to do and one of my subscribers Angie Antilove um, mentioned a spooky journal and I was like well that thinking to myself that would be really interesting but let's see if I have supplies to pull it together and if I could wrap my head around it and I decided that since Halloween is right around the corner it was a perfect time to try to work on that so that is what I have here, a junk journal that has a spooky theme or my interpretation of it. You guys can let me know how I did down in the comments. Tried to work with what I had. Um, it's a little out of my comfort zone, something a little different. Didn't really have a lot of supplies on hand, so I had to kind of, you know, dig and improvise. So this is what I came up with. For the cover, um, I used this really pretty patterned paper. It's the same on the front and back. Um, a black spine. I had this trim for a long time I thought it would be perfect so I put that on there I had to keep confiscating it from Harley she kept stealing it um, I had this frame I've had this frame forever this is like real early on in my scrapbooking days that I um, came across this don't know where how how long just had it in my stash hoarding it so I decided now was the time to use it this is an image off graphics fairy from the Vampire's Lair collection. Um, these are were in some um, thickers that I had, some thicker stickers. Um, I put one on each corner here, a little lock. Um, I was trying to figure out what else to put on the cover and I remembered I had these um, red paper roses so I grabbed some of them. Um, put a little lace to add dimension, crumpled some up here. Uh, I'm not sure how well it's going to show up, but I just threw a few gems like down here under the roses. I don't know if it's going to show up. Just so if the ca light catches it. Um, a few pearls, because I thought pearls added a little bit of a vintage um, feel to it. And then I had this, and this has been floating around my stash forever too. It was actually on a paper clip, but the paper clip broke off. I'm like, of course it did. But it was just plain. And this is from an image that I printed out online that I found somewhere and I just cut out a little portion of it. I don't know how it's going to show up there. A little skull. And it didn't have anything to cover it so I just used glossy accents which is a glue that um, goes on milky and then when it dries it dries clear just to finish it so the piece of paper wouldn't get damaged. Now. I mentioned in a recent video that I never saved the color savers from my palettes usually that I reuse I save them but I reuse them that's actually what this is for the plastic it's the acetate I just cut a piece off the um, color saver and use it to protect the paper image under there so that's what I did for the cover now I don't always put a dangle on my journals but I thought this one it was very fitting um, the spine I had these long labels that I found on the internet somewhere so I put that on there so uh, a name or a title or something could be written on the spine and then I made a dangle for the sign just made a bow out of some burgundy seam binding some black lace and threw it on there and then I added some charms um, this came in the mystery box that I got at job lots a while back and then this is something that was in my stash, the locket. And then it comes with a little clear circle to put on top to seal your image. And this is um, something I found on the internet, like with a paper clip. So I made a locket. Then I um, had a uh, card with some charms on it. So I put this one on there. 
This is from an earring I had, oh my gosh, forever ago that broke and I kept some of the pieces. So I put that on there with a little red gem. Of course I had to add a butterfly. And then I also had, let's see if I can move the bows out of the way, um, this charm that I thought was very fitting. Like um, antiqued a little bit with all the gems. So that's the little dangle I made for the spine. And now we're going to get into the actual journal and hopefully I'll try to stay in frame. And the light above is causing a glare. So that's the disadvantage of having the plastic. But I thought if I didn't protect it with the plastic and it were to get like a watermark or something, it would smudge the ink. So, and it makes it look a little bit more finished. So inside, oops, I use this pretty gray paper uh, as an end paper, front and back. And then I just, um, it's an image from the graphics fairy as well. So a little owl with the candelabra. Over here we have a bat. This is from the Vampire's Lair from the Premium Graphics Fairy. Um, put some labels. Elixir of Opium. Actually, this was a sheet of stickers, but I've had it so long it wasn't even sticky anymore. I had to glue it on there. Little border sticker. I think this is from um, basic gray paper. Um, an Ouija board image. And I just made a flap out of it. Some stamping. I, on this side, I made a side pocket. This is um, a tag from a, collect, a digital collection I purchased off Etsy. Uh, I can't think of the name of the shop right offhand, but I will put it down in the description box. I will look it up um, and put it in the description box, the shop, the Etsy shop that I purchased this image from. Then in the pocket, um, this is also from that same Etsy shop. Just some scroll and some print. And I inked everything with black ink to make it look old and sooty and um, more spooky. It's supposed to be spooky themed. And then I found a couple images of some tarot cards. So I threw those in there. Um, some blackbirds with the moon and some branches. This image is stamped quite a bit in here. Tuck spot, batwing. Uh, it says, which of the willows batwing? And then I put a couple images in that pocket. We have a cat, a vampire cat, and a pile of skulls with the moon in the background. Like I said, inked. A few of them I stamped this little image on. And in this little um, pictures of different bats. I said before, I leave a lot of writing space in my junk journal. Some people like really embellish them over the top which is gorgeous but I like mine to be decorated and functional so I leave a lot of writing space all the cards I leave um, so they can be written on the back I could always back them with pattern paper to make them sturdier and prettier but I like to leave them like this just so you can write on them to maximize writing space and a lot of my pages have a lot of blank space for writing um, some of those other journals are gorgeous but not very practical I want mine to be pretty and practical now I have a bag of actual vintage lace that I bought a while ago somewhere and I wanted to give it a more spooky old goth type look so I just um, put some black ink on it to look like maybe it's been through a fire or it's gotten damp or just old so I put some trim on there um, this is an image that I clip art that I found and glued on there this is also from that Etsy store I wish I could remember the name of it I should have looked before I sat down the film but the pocket and the tag and like I said, I'll list it down below for anyone who's interested. And then I was looking for something in my stash. I came across this little card I had printed out, I don't know how long ago. And I'm like, yep, going to tuck that in the pocket. And then I think there's more pages. And all these pages are tea dyed. I don't know if I guess it just feels thick, which I have to tea dye more before I make more journals. I love how it, the, the imperfections of dyeing the paper couple spiders I stamped on there. This is from the Graphics Fairy Vampire Lair collection on their premium membership. Clip art that I found and cut out. 
some more of that lace. That bat, I love that stamp. Like I said, lots of writing space. And then here's a pocket. Um, it says Willow of Willow Spider Legs. I like that. And since it was horizontal, I made it into a pocket. Then we've got some stuff in here. This is um, Transylvanian Treasures Coffin Nails. These will hold any kind of coffin together with ease. Slightly used. And then I just um, put it on some pattern paper that I had folded in half for some writing space. Put that in there. A tag that I found somewhere with some black lace. And um, then I found these little labels somewhere and printed them out. Spider extract, 100% pure. It's got writing over there too. I don't have my glasses on. Actually, they're right next to me. It says, use when you need some help to weave your dreams into reality. Last for seven days. Um, careful what you wish for. And it says it's got Edgar Allan Poe down here since 1809. Some more writing space, couple spiders, more writing space. I tied in my signatures with this burgundy um, cotton crochet thread. I just thought, I don't know, the red looked nicer. I could have used like um, an off-white or cream, but I just liked it, the red. Um, tarot card image that I found. This is from that um, shop on Etsy. I said ain't, but I thought the spider web was fitting. Um, some more writing space with that blackbird image. I did a little collaging in here. Usually I don't with my junk journals, but I wanted to try something different. So I made a, a little collage image I found on the internet, some script, a little butterfly dye, some flowers. And I thought this would um, be a nice spot if somebody wanted to write a word or something like that, a name or word. So just this, it says today, if someone wants to journal and then write the date, some more clip art, more writing space, some more of that vintage lace that I put black dye on, or ink, not really, dye ink, um, water-based ink, so back to that sheet. Like I said, the tea dyed, and sometimes when you lay them to dry them, you get these imperfections. A couple spiders over here. This was too plain so I just stuck this. It was a cutout from a paper collection I had. I think it was called um, Dark Romance. It had a few cut aparts and then um, a tag from that shop on Etsy. Stuck that in there. Then over here I made a flap and um, this is from the Graphics Fairy, one of their premium membership collections frame cut out the inside and everything printed it out and like I said I made it into a flap with some um, decorative paper so you could if you wanted to write and maybe not have it in plain sight you could flip this over it but I made this into a tag this is an image I found on the internet it was an, actually a Victorian photo that they made you know somebody um, like Photoshop edited it whatever to make it look spookier but actually the original picture is um this is how they dress women dress when they were in mourning with the black dresses so um thought that looked kind of spooky and creepy stapled some trim on there and then i just backed this with um some tea dyed um index card so it could be written on and then i of course put um the glare from the light i apologize for some pattern paper behind it so if you wanted to take this out and like move it somewhere else in the journal you could leave it like this or you could stick another tag or picture or whatever you want in there um but it would still look pretty behind it and with these being pockets i mean i could have just glued the picture in but i made them into pockets so even if you wanted to tuck something behind the photo or um something like that it was an option and then to pull the tag out and write on it i had this little piece of trim kicking around when i finished the journal so i just glued it down because yeah why not use it and then some more writing space with the blackbirds again and the back of that pen and paper then um this is actually a little booklet i'm going to show you and i just um 
use this black lace as a closure and it just unties and we've got the skeleton and then it just is an accordion that you pull out so I have the skeleton some writing space and I like that it had the black flowers and the lines to write on and then another skeleton image and then you flip it over this way so you have your page and then some more writing space a little um, skull sticker a little stamp and then another little skeleton just sitting there minding his business <laughs> so and then you can just um, tie it back up with the black lace which I'll do later second signature this real I like this green pattern paper I had it was Halloween paper I like how it's got a little bit of um, scroll here where I trimmed it down and another blackbird I thought it looks really nice on the green and then we've got uh, this green in this it just I'm like that just goes it just goes there so I put him on there and some writing space um, I stamped spider some more of the inked lace blank page to write on this is from that um, paper collection again dark romance put a little label there I like to put a few labels here and there in case um, whoever uses this wants to like date throughout the book and um, I made a pocket out of that some more of that trim I used all I had I only had a little bit but I was hoarding it and I'm like now's the time to use it so I put this card in there this is from that Etsy shop and then this is um, I made again um, from Graphics Fairy I um, printed out the frame cut out the inside used the acetate from my um, color protectors from my eyeshadow palettes and this guy um, actually those of you that are into like the horror and the goth he's actually a vampire so I put him in here. I didn't make this into a pocket. I just made this into a card and then I backed it with some red printed paper and then I put another label in here. Heartbeats. Recorded from real beats. 100% pure. Use these heartbeats to make that special someone fall in love with you. Irreversible effect. Make sure this is what you want. Edgar Allan, Pulse. Edgar Allan Poe since 1809. And I kind of tried to go with a theme here with the blood spatters, the vampire, and the heartbeat. Uh, let's see. So then, some more writing space. This little row of spiders. And see the striping? That's just from the tea dyeing, too. Same paper as on the cover, made into a pocket. Put a moth on there. Made this little tag. Let's just stick in there. Um, I thought the blue paper really went with the um, blue and black. It's got a little bit of script behind it, and then I just, you know, inked it just to write on. And then it's got like the gray parchment type paper behind it. Some of these are a little snug until they get, you know, used a little bit. And then this is um, part of a page from the Graphics Fairy. I think it's called Masquerade Ball or something like that. I don't remember right offhand. Another piece of clip art. Did some stamping of spiders. Made a little like diagonal side pocket. And I love how the paper has the um, like embossing on it. Black butterfly. This is from Vampire's Lair. I thought that was pretty spooky with the red roses and the blackbird and the candelabra and stuff. It's got the little banner there. Then I stuffed this packet. I just put a little postcard. Just something a little different, you know. A lot of writing space and then I put this on um, the blackbird in the moon thought that was kind of spooky creepy looking so I tucked him in there too and then I found this image on the internet that I thought was a little creepy spooky so tucked her in there and then this was a cut apart from that dark romance it says eternity so I thought that was kind of fitting then over here, I did. Um, I took an image of a postcard, a graphic, and then I found this on the internet. And I thought, well, geez, if I stagger them, I can have a wider pocket. So that's what I did with that. And then I put a couple things in this pocket. I put the bats in there against the moon, the full moon, and then an owl. My sister's like, that owl isn't very spooky. I go, yeah, well, he's gonna 
you know, take up residence in there anyway. The whole thing with owls being spooky, I guess in a way they are. They're at night and they're, you know, the prey they catch. Writing papers and spiders. Some lace. I did leave a, a couple pieces just plain and aged, their natural age. Then I read from the signature. This image I've seen, found this on the internet, but that Etsy shop also had a couple image, you know, a couple um, cut aparts with this image. But I thought he looks a little creepy there in his little corner. And then I have a Peddler's Disguise formula. And another image I found on the internet. This is a um, all the same um, artist. I'm trying to see if I can find the name. I didn't really keep track. I just found and printed out a lot of stuff I thought would go in the book. Nice. But I really like this image. So we'll just stick them back in there. Some more blank writing space. Spider. And then this is washi tape. When I um folded this in half, it kind of looked like it needed to be reinforced. So I threw some black roses on there. And this is a cut apart from that um, dark romance stack from Die Cuts for the View. I don't know if it's still available or not. You might be able to, if you scour around, be able to find it. It's really nice. If you like um, gothy romantic stuff, it's got blacks, grays, burgundies, deep purples, um, deep greens, um, really pretty if that's the type of thing you like. So I found this image, it said normal is an illusion, what is normal for the spider is chaos for the fly. And then I found this spider image which I think is really cool, the body looks like a locket with a skull in it, I thought that was kind of nice. So flip it over. Now this I did like some staggering pockets. We've got some of that ink lace over here. It's actually three pockets, which I'll take out and show you how I kind of did that. So it's three pockets. In the top pocket, I put a couple um, tags. We've got a vulture on a skull and some bats. These are from the Graphics Fairy. I'm not sure what collection, but threw some, you know, tan colored seam binding on there. And then in the middle pocket, I put this like spooky looking goth house with the full moon in there. And then I found these couple images are from the same artist as you've seen a lot in the book. And that's why I will not be selling this um, junk journal because these are probably copyrighted images, which if you make it for your personal use or gift it, they usually don't bother you. But if you make profit, a lot of these people that have copyrighted material will come after you just an FYI that's why I will not sell something that if I have copyrighted material in it but I thought this was spooky the candle on her head the skull so she's in the pocket and then this one her eyes just look very terrifying and then the silhouette behind and these I did back with paper they're both back with the same paper but it's light enough to write on to make them sturdier to put it in and out of the pocket. Some more tea dyed paper with the spiders. This is the other journal sheet from the Graphics Fairy. I, I, like I said, I'm not sure, but I think it's something mass grade ball or something like that. I thought it looked kind of spooky-ish, so I threw that in there, printed it on this gray parchment. Another envelope and tags from that um, Etsy shop. Like I said, I, it's bothering me that the name's not coming to mind, but I'll put it down below. A couple tags we have. This is um, Phrenology, and then I put the skull tag in there, and um, you know, Prospectus of the American Phrenological Journal. So I threw that in there. Some smaller tags. Tea dyed paper. I just did a little silly stamping there. Just kind of stamped around. Played with that another one of those flips and the frame and the acetate again and this time I just um, stapled on some of the burgundy um, seam binding and he's like if he's not creepy looking I don't know what it is and then I put the index card back here 
so it can be written on and slide him down in there which that was interesting by the time I made the pocket and I put the brown paper behind it. Um, when I made the pockets, you know, trying to trim the images so they fit in the frame just so, which I'll fit him in better because he's kind of not going in there very well. Some spiders, some paper. Now this is an image off the graphics fairy and it's actually a scan of, of an old book cover. And I was originally thinking about like, sizing this to use on the front of the journal but I'm like no I like to make my covers dimensional and I printed them out and they were narrow I said but it'll make a pipe a nice side pocket so that's what I did with that it's got the spider and the web and the skull and crossbones and the snakes it looks spooky to me this is from that dark romance just made a card put some tab edges um, a tombstone sticker on there and then I found this image hard to stay in frame here thought he was kind of creepy looking throw him in there and then bats in the belfry gotta have bats in the belfry so we stuck that in there and then the other side I didn't put anything on this because I just I love the way this looks with the uh, you know the baroque type design and then this rolls that was too pretty to cover up this is another image from the graphics fairy i don't know what collection it was in but i thought that with the owls again with the spooky it's not super spooky but it works for me <laughs> i left this blank for writing space then i did like a little collage pocket type thing over here i just put a label here again cut her out and left it open to make a pocket see the bat and stuff and then this is a cut apart from the dark romance that I thought would just make a cute little tag. And this is a collection on graphics, right? It's not a Halloween themed one, but I just thought he kind of looked a little on the creepy side. Some more of that inked lace. Stamped the moth. Um, Book of Spells little cover I thought was quite fitting. The skulls, the bats, like the creepy thorny. Um, border, grimoire, secret spells, and potions. And I just turned that into a flap. Made a packet here. This is actually die cuts with a view of the Mariposa stack, which I love because I love butterflies. But I thought the moths on the black would be fitting. And I tucked some stuff in this packet. Um, another tarot card I found. It's not very spooky, but I liked it, so I included it. And um, another one of those frames from the Graphics Fairy that I cut the inside and stuff, inked everything, and I backed it with this paper that I thought looked really kind of Victorian. And then I um, did a picture here. I love the paper I use on the back. Actually, ironically enough, I think this was Christmas paper, but it looks Victorian and gothy, so it got included. This picture. <laughs> It's funny because I was showing it to somebody and they're like, is she dead? I'm like, yes. Back in the Victorian days, it was a regular thing to take photos of post-mortem photos. And the thing is, some people now think, oh, that's super creepy. But back then, getting a photograph was so rare that sometimes the death photos were the only photos a family might have of a particular family member. So... Um, it was a normal thing back then. So yes, yeah, she is deceased and I thought that made that kind of creepy and spooky. And I backed this with some paper. And I didn't make a flap out of her. I just thought I would stick her in the pocket there. And this is some of that burgundy seam binding. So I did these with the tabs so they could be pulled out of the pockets. Otherwise, that would be very time consuming to dig it out of there. Spiders, there you go. Um, this is a sticker that I had some border stuck on there. Love this image. I love the image against the black. It's got the like the little demons, the black bird holding a key. Just really interesting to me. Definitely spooky. So I made a talk out of that. I put this um, image I found. I think it's a, an old book page that I just printed out on some cardstock. And put that in the pocket. 
and then another image from that author that I've used, uh, I mean, not author, artist, <laughs> excuse me, that I used other places in the book. And I will try to look up the name of this artist to give credit. I'll put it down in the description box. I'll try to include as many little pieces of information as I can remember. A little bit more collaging. Really like this paper a lot too. One of those border stickers. Spooky Owl. Just a little, couple of little pieces of paper I tore. Orange Butterfly. A label. Um, usually I don't do that stuff, but I wanted to do something different, like I said. Tea dyed paper. A moth. More with the lines from the dyeing. And then this is the other flap. Um. There's going to be another piece of it back here, but I just cut some paper down and made a flap. Love this paper. I love how it's got like the shiny dimension to it. Green butterfly. Same paper I used previously, and all I did was fold it in half and made a, like a little booklet out of it for writing space. Super easy. I just did um, a border punch. And then on this side, I made it into a side pocket. And I included this little potion to become invisible. And this owl is definitely is spooky, creepy. I don't care what anybody says. He looks menacing to me. Stuck him in there. Some spiders. Some more blank paper. That moth again. My red thread. Pocket made out of the same as the cover that border. This is from The Dark Romance. This has been kicking around in my stuff for so long and I'm like this is the perfect thing to use it on. Um, then I have this um, blackbird on the, the um, outdoor lantern. I thought the blue fit this very well and I just did the different border punch to keep it from getting too boring and then the black cap. If that's not the evilest looking eyes, I don't know what it is. Then we've got some animal skulls down here, the moon, some bat wings, and just all kinds of stuff going on there. It looks very gothy, creepy. And when Harley gets mad at me when I yell at her, she looks a lot like that. Different color, but the eyes are the same. Candles over here. So I threw that in there. And that's kind of spooky looking. I'm trying to stay with spooky. I, did, I didn't want to do Halloween. Because me, Halloween comes around once a year. Something like this, I felt like could be appreciated all year. If this is what you're into. Paper of the moth. There you go. That's that other piece of the flap. Um, another lady from the Vampire's Lair. On the Graphics Fairy Premium Membership. Um, chloroform liniment. Poison. Caution alcohol, chloroform, and some more I can't read, but I thought that was cool. Skulls, red roses, and then this is just the back, and I backed her with some gray paper so it wasn't stark white hanging out over here, and then I put some of that trim, spiders, more blank paper, a couple of the moths. I love this image too. I'm not into the goth creepy stuff that much, but I just love this image for some reason. The black and the blue together and then on the blue, I don't know, just as appealing to me. And then of course another label. Over here is the back of that printed paper. It's just black. This guy's kind of creepy looking if you ask me. And then I put the little label here, arsenic poisoning. And it's got some teeny tiny writing, but I tried to use a few of these throughout here. They were different apothecary. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. They were little labels. Like I said, they were stickers, but they weren't sticky no more because they were old. Now, I was digging through um, some book pages I had purchased at the flea market a while back to see if I could find like book pages to use for backgrounds for collages. And I came across this guy, and I thought, perfect, he's going in a pocket. And this is an actual, from an actual antique book. I bought a bunch of, um, where the books fell apart and then a vendor was selling the pages. And then I bought that thing of, um, papers from the bin store. It had the six packs of, like, the scrapbooking paper. And I was going through there just to see what was in there and I came across this. So I'm like, oh, it's a dictionary page and it shows a skeleton. So that works too. So 
that got shoved in a pocket. Played with some spider stamps, some more tea dyed. Like I said, a couple, couple pieces of lace, the original antique. Um, this is not dyed or anything. It's just, it is actual antique lace. So it is yellow from, because it's old. Um, stamp them off just with a lighter ink. Another owl. I love the little um, frame he's in. A little crinkled papers under his feet. And then I, this is just an envelope that I tea dyed, made it into a flap. This is another owl that I found off the Graphics Fairy. Um, this was, I think, in a Sleepy Hollow collection. So I inked him up, got the moth on there, put a label, and then I threw a few things in the pocket. I found this. I don't remember where I found this on the internet, but it's the Raven Edgar Allan Poe and like no eyes, creepy. And then I found these images of tarot cards. So I included those in the pocket. Um, just trying to think of a lot of different type of things so to keep it interesting. And then I came across this image. There's some pattern paper behind here. I didn't, I could have made it into a flat, but I just, made it like a little collage here some pattern paper I have and then I found this image and I think it didn't really give much information when I found it but I think this is like a vintage Halloween costume but if you talk about spooky that does it for me that's kind of creepy and then a little um, label here some of the spiders a moth with just a tiny bit of ink another one of those book covers and I think I think this was from the graphics fairy I don't know what collection I want to think it was like one of their coffee themed ones but I just thought the scroll and the dark colors um, would work so I made another side pocket and then I threw in this image I found this is actually a Victorian woman in mourning back in the Victorian era when they were mourning these are the type of dresses the women would wear um, very black morbid looking and they wore the black veils over their face so I um, wanted to include this because it's actually like a got a historical aspect to it and then I found this image floating around the internet and I thought that would be nice to include as well so I threw that in there and then the back the other the back of the other owl piece and it's got quite a bit of writing on here like if you wanted to write like a conclusion to the journal to wrap it up space that gray paper I used for end papers did the trim again and then the back with the um, paper I originally started with um, the only thing left to do is I do have a stamp that says handmade by and then I sign it and put it on here. I usually um, stamp it on a piece of paper and put it on the back somewhere, either on the inside or the outside. And again, the spine. I printed out these labels a while ago and they just kind of got lost in the mess. My craft room is like more like a mini craft store that I can't find half of the stuff I have because I think it's organized, but I still can't find stuff. But I thought that'd be something different. Usually I don't do anything like this, but I try to do a few things that I don't normally do. And like I said, I do dangles on some of my journals. It depends on the theme and what I have and whether I want to put the few extra little bits of effort into it. And I really felt like this journal was really fitting. And I didn't even think I had enough stuff to put on a dangle. But I dug around and found some stuff. And the cover I just finished. Um, that was the last thing I finished. And I went to bed after finishing it. I'm like, I don't know how I feel about the cover. Let me sleep on it. And then the next day I looked at it. I said, yeah, I guess it turned out okay. And he's kind of on a pop dot, so he doesn't lay flat. I wanted him to kind of stand up a little bit. And he's not perfect. The glossy accents did not um, go on as smooth as I would have liked. But, you know, handmade stuff is rarely perfect. But I think it still turned out okay. So, let me know what you think down below. Um, like I said, spooky type theme is a little out of my comfort zone. It's not something I usually do. Um, I liked the feedback because it pushes me to do try something different. And even though it's not my thing per se, I really, really, really loved putting this together. It was a lot of fun. 
I showed it to my sister and she's like you really like making those don't you I said I sure do but um and she's kind of like well what are you doing with it I said I don't know I'm gonna film it then I'll decide she's like I kind of really like that and I'm like we'll talk about it I'm undecided what I want to do yet let me let me enjoy it for a few days at least before I decide where its home is gonna be but let me know what you think down below um I just really wanted to do this theme like I said it was suggested from um a subscriber and I thought now is a good time to do it we're so close to Halloween so didn't want to make it Halloween-ish um, per se with the pumpkins and the orange and stuff but I wanted to kind of it's the time of year that you know we're into this kind of thing so anyway that is my latest junk journal I'm excited to um, start working on another one which I will show you guys as soon as I'm done so if you stuck with me through the video I really appreciate it I hope you liked what you um, saw and um, until next time bye everyone